Hello, and welcome back. Please take a minute to subscribe to the channel, and feed the YouTube algorithm. It really helps us out. On the morning of the 30th of June, 1908, the piece of a sparsely populated area near the Tunguska River in Russia was shattered by an explosion. An explosion that measured nearly 12 megatons. Even today, there is no definitive, incontrovertible evidence for the cause of that massive explosion, although the most likely candidate is a meteorite impact. To be fair, the preponderance of evidence, collected for decades following the event, overwhelmingly supports the meteorite impact theory. The suspected meteorite, believed to be about 50 to 60 meters, or 160 to 200 feet in size, approached the eastern Siberian taiga from the east-southeast, at the blistering speed of 27 kilometers per second, or nearly 2,237 miles per hour. The explosion, later discovered to have left no impact crater, making it an air-burst disintegration, flattened about 80 million trees in a 2,150 square kilometer, or 830 square mile area. Eyewitnesses also claimed at least three people perished in the explosion. Although it has been classified as an impact event, in fact, the largest impact event in recorded history, the meteorite is believed to have disintegrated roughly 5 to 10 kilometers, or 3 to 6 miles, above the surface of the Earth. The magnitude of the explosion was easily capable of destroying a large metropolitan area. Due to the extreme remoteness of the impact, and the political upheaval in Russia in the decade following the event, the first scientific expedition to specifically study the event wasn't mounted until 1927, led by Soviet mineralogist Leonid Kulik, almost two decades after the event occurred. What they did, and didn't find, astonished them. With the help of Avenki hunters as guides, Kulik and his team reached the center of the Tunguska blast area, fully expecting to find an impact crater. What they found was more of a blast zone, roughly 8 kilometers across, where scorched trees still stood, devoid of branches. Outside of this zone, while the trees were partially scorched, they were felled by the blast directionally away from the center, forming an enormous radial pattern of downed trees. The pattern was later found to resemble nothing so much as a gigantic, spread-eagled butterfly with a wingspan approaching 70 kilometers and a body length of 55 kilometers, or 43 and 33 miles, respectively. In 1938, Leonid Kulik initiated an aerial photo survey of the central part of the leveled forest, about 250 square kilometers, or 97 square miles. Totaling 1,500 negatives, they were all destroyed in 1975, as part of an effort by the USSR Academy of Sciences to dispose of flammable nitrate film. The developed pictures, thankfully preserved for further study, are located in the city of Tomsk. Expeditions to the area in the 50s and 60s found microscopic silicate and magnetite spheres while sifting the soil. Later expeditions also found similar spheres in the resin of the downed trees, which had been predicted after the soil finds, but were undetectable by the scientific instruments of the time. Chemical analysis of the spheres showed they contained high nickel to iron ratios, also commonly found in meteorites, further strengthening the meteorite theory. The concentrations of spheres in different soil samples were also found to be consistent with the air burst theory. Samples from bogs in the region, taken from the 1908 level, found unusually high levels of iridium, similar in proportion to the iridium levels found at the KT boundary, cementing a meteorite strike as the most likely, almost certain, candidate. People in the area of Lake Baikal, quite a distance from the impact, reported seeing a bluish light, nearly equaling the sun's brightness, moving across the sky, leaving a thin trail. Nearer the horizon, a flash produced a billowy cloud, with a pillar of fire casting a red light everywhere. About 10 minutes later, what sounded like artillery fire was heard. The shockwave reportedly knocked people off of their feet, and broke windows, even hundreds of kilometers away from ground zero. Seismic stations across Eurasia registered the explosion, with the airwaves being detected as far away as Washington, D.C. The shockwave has been estimated to be the equivalent of a 5.0 earthquake on the Richter scale. For the next few days, the night sky was luminous, with anecdotal reports of brightly lit photos having been successfully taken, at midnight, in Scotland and Sweden, all without using a flash. Even in the US, the Mount Wilson Observatory in California reported a decrease in atmospheric transparency, which was consistent with an increase in suspended dust particles. There have been around 1,000 scientific papers written about the Tunguska event, mostly in Russian, 
and most modern scientific interpretations rely heavily upon damage estimates and geological studies which occurred many years after the event, again mainly due to the political upheaval and remoteness. Estimations of the energy released in the explosion can range from 3 to 30 megatons. The limited instrumentation available in the early 20th century necessitates such a wide range of estimates. Any way you look at it, the Tunguska event, little known outside Russia, and despite the reams of scientific papers written about it, both literally and figuratively, remains one of the biggest mysteries of history to normal, everyday people, and unexpected history to boot. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, share, and subscribe. Help us feed the YouTube algorithm. If you'd like to support what we do, you can head over to our Patreon page for monthly membership offerings. If a monthly charge doesn't appeal to you, you can make donations for as little as $3 through our Buy Me A Coffee page. Or you could buy some merch. All links will be in the description below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.